Hello everyone, so in this video I'm going to show you how I set up my Raspberry Pi for war driving. Uh, for those who don't know, war driving is when you go out into your car with a computer and a wireless antenna and map out wireless networks that you find. Uh, there's four basic things you need to do this. The first is a computer, which in this case I'm using this Raspberry Pi. The second is a GPS receiver, so you can map out where the access point was. And the one I use is this one just here, it's a USB one and the model number is BU353 I'm going to put all the model numbers and things in the description and it's yeah USB so you plug that straight in to the Raspberry Pi here uh, the third thing you need is a wireless antenna and the one I use is this Alpha card here which is also USB and I'll just zoom out a bit so you can see more clearly there you go. Yeah, it's this wireless card here and that also plugs just straight in and the good thing about this, this card here is it's got a detachable antenna so you can get other ones like this, much bigger, which can pick up more networks. I think this is 25 dBi, I think. So yeah, and the last thing you need, because you'll be in the car, you have to power it and I use this little adapter here that plugs into the cigarette lighter which inputs USB so you plug the Raspberry Pi into the cigarette lighter on the car. And they're the three things you need to get it to start wall driving. Um, in case you're wondering, I made a video before this explaining this status lights here. Um, for this, for wall driving, what I'm using them for is to indicate when uh, the GPS, if the GPS is running on the Raspberry Pi and if Kismet is running on the Raspberry Pi. And uh, Kismet is, a pro is the program that I use to run on the, on the computer and map out the networks. And what it does is it maps out the networks and saves them to a log file which you can then use when, um, afterwards to put them into a KML file which is a Google Earth file where you can see the wireless networks on Google Earth in their correct locations. So let's have a test then. If I plug this, plug this in, how I've got it set up at the minute is if the GPS is running okay the red light will turn on and if the Kismet is running okay the the other light will turn on. So it really prevents going out in a car for an hour and realising when you get home that one of the programs isn't running or the GPS isn't on and wasting an hour of your time. It, it's a sure way of telling that it's all running because the lights are on. Okay, So you can see at the minute the screen that the computer is starting up and now yes the version, the operating system I'm using is uh, called Poompy. It's a uh, pen testing distribution which had uh, Kismet on already and you can see down here that the LEDs are on, I've just the lights so you can see a bit clearly but yeah the LEDs are on so that shows that both Kismet and the GPS receiver are both working and it's all ready to go and walking around with this now will then map out the wireless networks so what I can do over here is if I open Putty and Put the SSH into the computer. Uh, okay. Um, what I can do to show you show you the LED thing is if I kill the process for the Kismet application, you'll see the LED will turn turn off. So as you can see at the minute, both the red and LED, red and yellow LEDs are on. Okay. So if I come over here and do a, let's make sure it's in focus, there you go, do a, a kill all kismet server, there we go, that should have stopped the server and as you can see down here, the lights off for the yellow LED which shows kismet isn't running and uh, the good thing about the kismet program is that if the wireless card doesn't work or it then just automatically closes the kismet program so then the script I use to turn off and on the LEDs works automatically. Uh, I can show you the script as well real quick. Uh, if I open uh, WinSCP, I should have had dippers open before really, but oh well. Um, okay, scripts. It's called Kismet Status, I think is that one. It's not that one. It is Wardrive Status, there we go. Okay, so I could put this in the comments as well so it's easy to copy paste and everything, but 
yeah, there's, there's a quick look at it there. It's very simple, it's only 24 lines, so yeah, that's, that's that. And what, all, it, all it really does is it, it looks for, it takes a copy of all the processes which are running on the Raspberry Pi and does a grep for the word Kismet server and the word GPSD. Uh, GPSD is the the GPS daemon which is running on the computer which feeds the information to Kismet itself. So, yeah, that's it. Okay, so here we are giving it a test run. I forgot to mention earlier, the way I made Kismet start automatically when I turn the Raspberry Pi on is by putting an entry into the rc.local file. Uh, there's two entries I've put in. The first one is to make the Python script start which runs the LEDs and the second is for the Kismet server to start as well. And in the description I'll put in the two entries down there so you can copy paste them in yourself. It's created these different files that you can see on the right hand side here. Um, the, the, really, the main one of interest in this case is this .net XML file. Uh, so what you want to do with this is there's a program called uh, it's called PyKismet KML and I'm going to put the link in the description from where I got it from because it's actually very good and I can show you over here now if I zoom in at the top here if I can actually get the camera to go to okay this is this, this command here and basically it converts this .net XML file to a KML file so if I run this now you can see it just goes through and it will come out saying it's all finished Okay, there we go. So it also says that there's eight, eight access points it found all, all together from just sitting here. So, okay. So now if I go to the camel file it made, which is in scripts in the same folder, which is there, and then I can double click it, and you'll see it opens Google Earth, and it will start zooming in on where the access point was recorded. Okay, so I'll stop zooming in there, but you can take my take we'll take my word for it that it will zoom right in and go on to pretty much probably around 10, 20 meters accuracy. And yeah that's that's all there really is to it. Um thank you for watching. Goodbye.